Welcome back everyone. This is our example three video for partial fraction decomposition. We have done a series of videos on the basics and setting these up and how to start them. We've done some simpler examples. Here we're gonna step up the difficulty a little bit in our example three video. We've got five x squared plus four x minus seven over our factors x plus three and x squared plus four. So you notice we have a quadratic factor here and it's already factored at least for us. So we can go ahead and say one denominator will be x plus three and one denominator will be x squared plus four. This first one, I need all terms below x term. That would just be constant. Since this starts with x squared, I would need all powers below x squared, which would be x term and a constant. So that's our setup, A on the top of the first one and bx plus c on top of the second one. Now, when we're multiplying to get a common denominator, we wouldn't change the first one at all. So we'll keep 5x squared plus 4x minus seven. If I were getting a common denominator, I would multiply the a fraction on the top and the bottom by x squared plus four. If I were multiplying the bx plus c fraction to get a common denominator, I would multiply the top and bottom by x plus three. And remember, we only solve the tops anyway, so I'm not going to write all of the denominators under these. We'll just solve this anyway. Uh, you might notice here that we can go ahead and set x equal to negative 3, and that's going to give us uh, some headway at least, although we won't be able to get all the way through without comparing coefficients. If we let x equal to negative 3, so I'll write that x equals negative 3, then that will give us, let's see, we have x squared, which would be 9, times 5, which is 45, negative 3 times 4, that'd be negative 12, and then we have minus 7. Negative 3 squared would be 9 plus 4, so we would get a times 13. And of course, we did this on purpose to make this entire thing 0, so the rest of that is 0. Okay, 45 minus 12 minus 7 is going to give us 26. And that 26 is equal to 13a. And if I divide both sides by 13, I would get that a is equal to 2. The problem moving forward now is that I cannot set x equal to anything for x squared plus 4 to equal 0. I would need an imaginary number, complex number, to do that. So it turns out we can't do it, we're gonna to have to move to method two. We've gotten as far as we can on method one, which is set factors equal to zero. So now we distribute everything and compare coefficients. So we'll keep our left side, it is already simplified as much as possible. Over here, distributing the a, we get a times x squared, and we get a times four, so that would be plus four a. Distributing bx times x, I get bx squared. Distributing bx times 3, we get 3bx. Distributing c times x, we get cx. And c times 3, we get plus 3c. We now combine like terms on the right side, and then we just compare across the equal sign. So 5x squared plus 4x minus 7 stays. If I combine all my x squared terms, I look through, here's an x squared term, here's another x squared term. How many x squareds do I have? A plus B is how many I have on the right side. All right, we look through, let's look and find our x terms. So we have an x term here and here. So how many x's do I have? Well, I have 3B here and C, so 3B plus C is how many x's I have. And then the constants, I have a 4a there and I have a 3c there. So for my constants, I'll just put them in parentheses so we don't lose any of them, 4a plus 3c. Okay, now we'll just compare across the equal sign and everything that is a like term should have the same coefficient. So if I look at my x squareds, I have five over here. I have a plus b over here. I need the same amount of x squareds on both sides, so that tells me a plus b is 5. I need the same amount of x's on both sides. I have 4 over here, and I have 3b plus c over here. That tells me that 3b plus c is equal to 4. And last, I have 
negative 7 for a constant there. My constants are over here 4a plus 3c, so that tells me 4a plus 3c is equal to negative 7. The good news is I already know a, a is 2, so if I want to solve b, I think the shortest path to victory is plugging it into the first one. So if I plug in a is 2 into this one, that tells me 2 plus b is equal to 5, and if I subtract 2 from both sides, that's going to tell me that b is 3. Um, I could use the next one, or I could use the, you know, this one here. I'll just use the third one. I think in one of the previous videos I used the first and the second, so I'll just use this one. So if I plug in a equals 2, then that would give me 8 plus 3c is equal to negative 7. If I subtract 8 on both sides, that would give me that 3c is equal to negative 15. And if I divide by 3, then that would give me that c is negative 5. Okay, so I take my a, b, and c, and I plug them back into my original. I'm going to do that up here, and I'm just going to move my x equals negative 3 out of the way, so we can do it right next to where I wrote everything. Actually, I'll get rid of my arrow as well, yeah? That looks better, I think. Okay, so a goes over x plus 3, and a was 2. So this is 2 over x plus 3 plus... We have b was 3, so that'll be a 3x on top, and then c was negative 5, so it's 3x minus 5 on top, and that is over x squared plus 4. Okay, so that's an example where you have to compare coefficients, because we have an irreducible quadratic, where I can't set that factor equal to 0, and we had to compare things on both sides. All right, we have two more examples left. Check out our example 4 and 5 videos. We hope to see you in the next one.